Escalating tensions in the Middle East. Get this now. Two regional heavyweights are going at it. Watch. So these are protesters in India, also storming the Saudi embassy in Tehran, Iran, and then torching that place. Uh, their fury stemming from Saudi Arabia's execution of this prominent Shiite cleric. Iran's supreme leader now vowing divine revenge for his death. Katie McFarland, Fox News national security analyst and a former deputy assistant secretary of defense, and good morning to you. Morning. Uh, let's keep it simple. There's a lot going on throughout yeah. this entire region. Saudi Arabia executed about 150 uh, what they called political prisoners. Mm -hmm. Many of them were Sunni, some of them were Shiite this past weekend. Then what? This is going to be the thing that ignites, I think, a regional conflict. Not a, a diplomatic conflict has already started, but it could be an economic conflict, proxy war conflict. It may ultimately be a conflict between the two great groups of Islam, the Shiites and the Sunnis. Saudi Arabia is a Sunni country. They executed Shiite and Sunnis. They, they were doing that for two reasons. They wanted to show their internal opponents, the people who might be ISIS followers or Al-Qaeda followers, we're coming after you. The Saudis also wanted to show Iran, Shiite country, don't mess with us, here's what we do to Shiites. The problem that Saudi Arabia faces, I think, going forward is it is in a very vulnerable position. Geographically, it's between ISIS and Iran. Politically, it's between the Shiites and the Sunnis, and it has the holy sites. It has Mecca and Medina. And if you're Iran and you want to control the region, or if you're ISIS and you want to control the region, you've got to control those holy so sites. So the Saudi royal family is concerned. You bet they're concerned. And they are sending a message, as you point out, mm -hmm. internally and externally, don't mess with us. Is there a question as to whether or not this family can be overthrown? Is that even a possibility? Well, you know, I, I, I thought that they've been vulnerable for a number of years, but I think they're very vulnerable now. Now, a lot of experts will say, oh, no, no, they have so much money, they're going to be there forever, they're going to squish every opponent. No, look at their finances. Saudi Arabia has been a wealthy country because of the high price of oil. They've just two days uh, last week put out their new budget. Their new budget shows they have a huge shortfall of income because of the falling oil prices. So they're not going to have that cushion, that extra money to spread around mm -hmm. to friends and to defeat foes. They're, I think they're vulnerable in that way. They're also vulnerable because if you go back and look at where did Osama bin Laden come from? Yeah. Saudi Arabia. He wanted to overthrow the Saudi royal family, couldn't do it, so he went after the United States. Their goal, though, is still Saudi Arabia. Uh, come back and just clarify this point. This Shiite cleric who was executed yes. has Iran up in arms. Yes. Where does this go? I think it only gets worse. Why? Because the Saudi, they're already Iran and Saudi Arabia are already fighting proxy fights in Syria. That's a proxy fight in Yemen. So they're already bumping up close up to each other. Iran wants to eliminate Saudi Arabia. Again, one reason is because they want to control the holy sites. The second reason is they want to dominate the whole area. And the third reason is they want the price of oil to go up. ISIS has the same objective. Okay. In the meantime, on ISIS, apparently they execute five Brits. Yep. Um, uh, shot with a handgun. Uh, on a, a, a video that's said to be very graphic. We won't show it here. No. Um, so ISIS is still doing what ISIS does. In the meantime, Islamic State in Libya apparently is attacking oil ports there. Mm -hmm. Keep an eye on this story in Libya throughout the next year. This will yeah. be an issue on the campaign trail because right now Libya is a mess with no direction but chaos. And that's a Hillary Clinton war. Libya was her war. And look at how it's turned out. There's no happy peace democracy in Libya. It's jihadi chaos, tribe against tribe. I look at the Middle East today, I think we're looking at a generation of conflict between Shiites and Sunnis, tribe to tribe. Borders are not going to matter. It's going to be a fight to the finish because both groups of the radical extremists, Shiites and the radical extremist Sunnis, feel that they have been preordained and destined to rule the world and exterminate everybody else. A generation. I think it's going to go for a generation. What do we do in that? I think we have to rethink what are our strategic interests in the, in the Middle East entirely. It's been, historically, it's been Israel, oil, terrorists. We want to protect Israel. We wanted their oil. We don't want their terrorists. Can we achieve those objectives in any other way? We've got our own oil now. We don't need their oil. Mm. We sure don't want their terrorists. We don't want whatever fighting happens there to spill out to us. And I think we owe it to oh. Israel to defend them throughout. Right. I guess that's what fracking does, huh? You bet that does. It gives us options we didn't have a year ago. Wow. Thanks, KT. Good to see you. Thank KT you, Bill. McFarland Thank here. You.